Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim In alhamdulillah rabbil alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyana muhammadin Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in So today insha'Allah ta'ala We sit for a brief reminder Bi'idhnillah ta'ala And insha'Allah we'll make the reminder brief Because um, no doubt our, our sisters they want to socialize and um, mingle with one another. So inshallah ta'ala will make the reminder brief and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it beneficial. Um, the topic at hand today was um, a believing woman <coughs> honors her husband. A believing woman honors her husband. I mean, no doubt that uh, topic was chosen because uh, we live in a society where people may not understand, where it may not be emphasized in a proper manner um, the status, the status of the husband. So we wanted to um, mention a few words um, to our sisters to remind them to always, to always honor their husband. <clears throat> And one of the mistakes that we make, or one of the things that may be overlooked is that the hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that discuss how to behave with the believers, man or woman, no doubt spouses enter into that. No doubt that spouses enter into that. So when we read a hadith that talks about how we should interact with the Muslim or how we should interact with the believers, then no doubt spouses enter, in, enter into that. And we have a hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that highlights some beautiful mannerisms that the wife should have with her husband and likewise the husband should have with his wife. And it's found in the hadith of Abu Huraira, a hadith that many of us know. And in the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, من نفس عن مؤمنا قربة من قرب الدنيا نفس الله عنه قربة من قرب يوم القيامة. We had a hadith of Abu Huraira. Where he said that the Prophet Sallallahu said Whoever alleviates a worldly burden for a believer Whoever alleviates a worldly burden for a believer Allah alleviates one of his burdens on the day of judgment And no doubt this is one of those hadith that talk about how we should interact with the believers and again, just to reiterate and keep our thought process on track, our spouses are from the believers. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned whoever alleviates a worldly burden from, from a believer. So no doubt the believing woman hears that hadith and she should rush to alleviate any burdens from her husband and to honor her husband and to not make things difficult for her husband whether it be difficult on his ears or difficult on his, 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 his person. But she hears this hadith and she should want to alleviate the burdens from her husband. And likewise, the husband should want to alleviate the burdens, the burdens from his wife. And the reward for that is tremendous. And it's some, another thing that we need to remember is that when we're interacting with our spouses, we're looking for the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not that you're necessarily looking for thanks from your spouse. And as spouses, we should thank our spouses. That's not what I'm saying, that we shouldn't thank our spouses. But what I'm saying is when spouses interact with one another, 
it has to be at the forefront of their thought process that I'm trying to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that I'm looking for the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we look at this hadith, it says, whoever alleviates this burden, Allah alleviates one of his burdens on the day of judgment. And no doubt which one of us isn't in need of our burdens being relieved on the day of judgment. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he continued and he said, وَمَنْ يَسَّرَ أو وَمَنْ يَسَّرَ عَلَى مُعْسِدًا يَسَّرَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, whoever makes things easy for someone facing hardship, if you know that your husband is facing some type of hardship or a husband knows that his wife is facing some type of hardship, then no doubt the spouses, they should strive to, to make those hardships easy. So we learn from this hadith so far that we should be trying to relieve, bur relieve burdens and we should be trying to make hardships easy for one another. And here we have another reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whoever makes things easy for someone facing hardships. And again, just so we make sure we understand in these texts, it says someone and no doubt your spouse enters into that someone. So whoever makes things easy for someone facing hardships, Allah provides him or her with ease in this life and the next. So if you make things easy for your husband, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make things for easy for you in this life and the next. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went on and he said, وَمَنْ سَتَرَ مُسْلِمًا and the Prophet وسلم, he said, whoever screens a Muslim, and no doubt that's from the etiquette of a wife, that's from the biggest etiquette of a wife, is to keep the secrets of her husband. That's one of the main etiquettes of a, of a good, righteous, pious, believing wife, is that she keeps the secrets of her husband. And again, this hadith, it says, Whoever screens a Muslim. And again, the spouses, they enter into that. Whoever screens a Muslim. What's the reward? Allah screens him or her in this life and the next. And no doubt which one of us doesn't need our shortcomings covered. And which one of us doesn't need our faults concealed. So a way to achieve that is found in the hadith. Whoever screens a Muslim, Allah screens him or her in this life and the next. So from the etiquette of a good wife and likewise from the etiquette of a good husband is that they screen the shortcomings, that they screen the shortcomings of their spouse. And that your spouse shouldn't be made an object of joking or object of belittlement or object of backbiting. No, a woman shouldn't do that to her husband. That she gets with her girlfriends and discusses her husband or her family members and discusses her husband in, in a belittling fashion. It's not from the etiquette of a believing woman. Likewise, a believing man. It's not that he gets around his family members and whoever else he speaks to and speaks ill of his wife. But rather, each spouse should, each, should, should mention one another in a manner that's going to cause the people who are on the outside looking in to respect their spouse. And they should know that the spouses respect one another. And that speaking about the spouses is off limits in front of me or off limits in front of her. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, whoever screens a Muslim, Allah screens him or her in this life and the next. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he continued and he said, Wallahu, fi awni al-abdi, ma kana al-abdu fi awni akhihi. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Allah continues to aid a worshiper and all of us need the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
That's the reward. It's mentioned from the very beginning. Allah continues to aid the worshiper. So long as that worshiper continues to aid his brother. And no doubt that's general again. But your husband is your brother. Your husband is your brother in Islam. So Allah continues to aid a worshiper. So as long as that worshiper continues to aid his brother or her brother. So all of us, it's not even a question. All of us are in need of the aid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we want to receive that aid from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the ways is to just simply aid your brother. Aid your husband and what he needs to aid with, help him. Make things easy for him. Relieve burdens from him. And no doubt is vice versa as well. But it just so happens that the address is to the sisters, but it's vice versa as well. There's one more, um, a few more words that we want to look at, and then we'll end, inshallah ta'ala. But there's some words from Sheikh Uthaymeen. And it was an article that was published in, in 2018. But in the article, it was titled Navigating Relationships. How do we, how do, in relationships right here, we're not just talking about spouses, even though that's included. But how do we na navigate relationships? How do, how do we interact with one another? Right? In, the, in the, the course of discussion right now, we'll, we'll keep it on the spouses. How does a woman interact with her husband and how does a husband or how does a man interact with his wife? Right, so Sheikh Uthaymeen, Rahimahullah, he said, he's discussing, he's discussing a particular hadith, just so everything is clear. He's discussing the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is found in Sahih Muslim. He's discussing a hadith that says a believing man does not despise a believing woman. He's discussing the hadith, a believing man does not despise a believing woman. If he sees a trait he dislikes, he thinks about a trait he does like. And that's how the believing man should be with his wife. A believing man does not despise a believing woman. If he sees a trait he dislikes, he thinks about a trait he does like. And no doubt that could be vice versa. The woman, she shouldn't despise her husband. If she sees something she dislikes, there, there are things that she does like. Think about those things. So Sheikh Uthaymi, he elaborates. He said, if your wife displays, and it could be husband as well, displays unbefitting behavior towards you, he says something that's, that's unbefitting towards you, or does something that's unbefitting towards you. Listen to the thought process, how it should be. Do not assess the situation thinking only about the moment. Everyone is, all of us are going to make mistakes. No one in here is free from error. No one in here is free from saying something that they shouldn't have, something slipping out of their mouth that, that they shouldn't have said. That was cold, that was harsh, that was cruel. None of us are free from that. So a situation occurs where he says something or he does something that's unbefitting. Sheikh Othaymi mentions, don't think about the moment. The moment is important, but we understand what's being, being said. We're not disregarding anybody's actions or, 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 or feelings. But we're talking about the bigger picture. Do not assess the situation thinking only about the moment. Rather... Think about the good times in the past, especially for those who have a history. If you've been married 10, 15, 20 years, right? think about the good times in the past. And if we ponder, how numerous will they be compared to this one slip of the tongue or this one inappropriate behavior? But some inappropriate behavior you can't recoup from. So we're talking, everybody has their limits, but we're talking about things that are in the, in the norm, in the, in the realm of being normal. 
Rather, think about the good times in the past and think about the potential for improvement in the future. How many of us do that? When that thing happens, do we just sit and just focus on that one thing that was said? Or that one thing that was done, we don't think about the numerous things in the past and we don't think about the person is actually trying to rectify themselves and they're not being arrogant. They're actually apologizing and saying that they're sorry. So the potential for improvement in the future is there. Or are we going to harp on the moment? That's not how we should be. Whether it be a wife dealing with her husband or whether it be a husband dealing with his wife. Then come to a just, a just decision, as Sheikh Uthaymi mentions. Thinking about the past, thinking about the future, and then come to a, a, a just decision. Sheikh Uthaymi, he mentions the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about wives can be applied to other people you interact with. Right, that's what we mentioned. Even though this hadith is about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was addressing the believing man about the believing woman, about if, they, if a man sees something that he dislikes, think about the things that he does like. It's not specific to just wives and, and, and assessing wives. But again, wives can assess their husbands in the same fashion. If you see something you dislike, look for something that you do like. And you will find something because you would not have married the brother if he didn't have good qualities. So it can be applied to other people you interact with and have friendships as well. So Sheikh Uthaymi, he expounds even more to outside of spouses, to even friendships and people who you interact with. You interact with, you have a girlfriend or a sister, and she says one thing, and that's it. She never did anything good. She's not apologetic, trying to change her behavior in the future. And again, Imam Asadi, he mentions some, some beautiful speech, just about how we interact with each other, period, for all of us. Imam Asadi, he mentions, before you interact with someone, but remember, remember this. Before you interact with someone, interact with them like you're the old you. Interact with them like you're the old you. What's meant by that? Interact with them before you got yourself together because there's a time when all, we didn't always have ourselves together. So when you go to talk to someone, talk to them as if you, in the mind frame when you were struggling with your hijab, if you ever were. When you were struggling with your fast, then talk to them. Don't talk down to them because you're fasting now, and now you talk down to them. Or you may have been struggling with some other things. Alhamdulillah, you got yourself together before you go to advise someone, before you go to talk to someone, before you go to assess someone. Put yourself in your shoes before you got yourself together, and you'll find that your speech will come out in a much more humble fashion. Because when you speak to people from the angle of you've gotten yourself together, you may begin to speak down to them. So Sheikh Uthaymi, he mentions, this mind framing can be applied to other relationships as well. If someone treats you wrong one day, right, and again, we're talking about the believing woman honoring her husband, so, you know, keep it on your husband. But don't just restrict it to that. If someone treats you wrong one day out of many, do not forget the times when you were treated well. Don't throw all of that out the window. And we have to be careful when we're discussing things with our spouses about using generalities. You never do this. Never. You always do that. Always. So when you're having conversations with your spouse, stay away from those generalities always and never. And terminologies like that. Because nine times out of ten, they're not true. A person doesn't always do that. 
Or it's not a situation that a person never does something. That's normally an exaggeration. And unjust. So if someone treats you wrong one day out of many, do not forget the times when you were treated well. And combine between the two. Right? Combine between the two. If there are more instances of kind treatment, which is normally the case. If there are more instances of kind treatment, then come to the conclusion that this is a decent person who doesn't make mistakes. The person treats you well all throughout the month. And one day, a, per a person has a bad day. And that's the, the ruling on the person is based off of the one day, not the, not the days, that can, not the whole month. So if there are more instances of kind treatment, then make the decision that this is a decent person. But listen to this. That's, that's, that's kind of clear. But listen to what Shago Thaymin says. He said, if there are more instances of poor treatment, that person may say, well, you know, the whole month, it was just one day that was good. It's always really bad. If there are more instances of poor treatment, then contemplate. Shake with me, he still said contemplate. Right? If there are more instances of poor treatment, then contemplate. If forgiveness is an option, because again, which one of us doesn't need to be forgiven? If, the, if forgiveness is an option, then forgive. Forgive the person. And people who are able to forgive and reconcile, their reward is with Allah who's the with the Allah. And people who are able to forgive and reconcile, then the reward is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If forgiveness is not an option, because it might not be an option. If forgiveness is not an option, then seek your rights. There's nothing wrong with that. Then seek your rights. And you are not to be blamed if you seek your rights. Shaykh what they mean, he mentions, think about which one is most beneficial. So he mentions in summary, a person who has relationships with others. <clears throat> in summary, a person who has relationships with others, whether it be marriage, Friendship, business, etc. Interaction should be based on justice. What's meant by justice? What's meant by justice is thinking about the whole relationship. Not the moment. Thinking about the whole relationship, the past and the potential for the future. And if a person, again, if a person is expressing sorrow, and expressing the, the, the will to change, then that has, to, that has to be accepted. Not unless it's at a point where it's just lip service. But if a person is expressing the, 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 the will to change and to do better, that has to be accepted because there'll come a point in time where you will make a mistake. And you'll want your will and your desire to change to be accepted. So interaction should be based on justice. If a character trait is disliked or an unbefitting action occurs, think about the good as well and combine between the two. So this is just a reminder um, to my sisters in Islam to, to honor your husband. Right? To honor your husband and to try to be his friend and to try, you know, try to make things easy for him and to re remove burdens and to remove hardships. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you, reward you for your efforts. 
هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم